Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype, traits and GED match results of a Native American from Peru. Now this is actually a very ancient genome, um, as you can see this genome uh, dates back to 23 centuries, 23, yeah, tw yeah, 23 centuries before the common era. So it's a super ancient genome from South America, it's from Peru. Uh, his Y DNA is Q1B, and his mitochondrial lineage is C1C. Uh, in case you want to know where exactly this individual is from, where this where this uh, sample is from, this is where he was from. This is where he lived. So on the coast of the Pacific Ocean, uh, in Peru. This looks like a mountainous mountainous place. Yeah, it looks like he lived in the mountains. Pretty cool. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and, and look at his traits. We're going to start with uh, Nashakot calculator results. With Nashakot, he is predicted to have, it looks like, dark brown eyes. Uh, it looks like black hair and dark or brown skin. Um, yep, that's what it looks like. So, basically, very dark eye color, very dark hair color, and uh, dark skin color as well. Alright, we're going to go ahead and look at uh, some of the stuff. Does he have blue eye haplotype 2? No, he does not have blue eye haplotype 2 or blue eye haplotype 3 or blue eye haplotype 4. However, he does have blue eye haplotype 1. Uh, it's it's uh, it's pretty common for Native Americans to have blue eye haplotype 1 and even 2. Um, but in his in his case, he's got BH1 without BH2. All right. Let's go ahead and scroll up to the very beginning and see his polygenic risk scores. For the polygenic risk scores, it looks like he's got a below average score for schizophrenia, uh, an above average score for type 2 diabetes, and a high score for Alzheimer's. Uh, because if you think about this, right, uh, a score of 2.9 times the average for Alzheimer's is actually very significant because Alzheimer's is a common disease. Something like 10% of elderly people end up developing Alzheimer's. If you have a 2.9 times the, aver the average, that means you have a 29% chance of developing the Alzheimer's uh, in your timeline, which is kind of extreme in my opinion. For cancers, he's got five risk variants for breast cancer out of 14 that were found in the file, so that's uh, also kind of extreme. And for testicular cancer, 17 risk variants out of 24, once again kind of extreme. So for breast cancer, you really want to see perhaps one or two out of 14. Uh, in his case, he's got five risk variants. For testicular cancer, you want to see maybe one quarter to half. In this case, this is way over half. So once again, a kind of extreme result when it comes to cancers, breast cancer and testicular cancer. Um, this individual has got a gene called Valmet variation, meaning Valmet genotype, so uh, intermediate between warrior and warrior. Uh, warrior genotype in MAOA, so overall probably more warrior than warrior. Um, no no go learner variants in DRD2 pro phenetine pro variation, so slightly higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. And no ALE and TAC1. Okay, so pretty much higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. Is there? There, there's this gene, there is uh, this genotype right here, which actually leads to slightly lower uh, amount of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. But everything else in DRD2 seems to suggest this individual has a little bit more dopamine D2 receptor sites than what's typical for the average person. Uh, does not have long form 5 HTLPR, so he's got short form 5 HTLPR. Does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. Well, no, no surprises here. It's not a European. Um, for the empathy gene, it looks like heterozygous genotype, so intermediate between lower and higher levels of empathy. Um, okay, that's a crazy genotype. So he's got um, a seven-fold increase in the risk of type 1 diabetes. It's very possible that this individual had type 1 diabetes, although I'm not sure. Um, maybe it wasn't a thing back then, but it's possible that this individual had type 1 diabetes based on the genotype right here. I think it was an adult, so there's... Yeah, I think uh, if they had type 1 diabetes and they were... They probably would have died as a kid uh, in this time frame, in this location, because there wasn't like the shots and stuff like that. There wasn't any medicines for that. For hemochromatosis, this individual does not carry any risk variants for hemochromatosis. Um, and for Alzheimer's, this is why... This is why he's scoring so high for Alzheimer's because of this, geno this genotype, which leads to increased risk of Alzheimer's. Uh, the important, the most important variations here are these two, but they are not in the file, unfortunately. Uh, no micro P, good for him. 
slightly increased cranial size and 1% higher IQ, good for him. Looks like impaired muscle performance, likely endurance athlete. Uh, Alright, so there's basically... I, I'm not really sure how this polymorphism works and what it does, but the T allele corresponds with um, impaired muscle performance and uh, better ability to, you know, endurance sports, stuff like that, like running and stuff. Whereas the C allele corresponds to apparently better muscle performance and better like explosive strength, stuff like that. So this individual is more likely to be an endurance athlete rather than have explosive strength. Uh, he doesn't have fat gene variants in MCOs, RS9939609, not overweight, does not have 40, 40 sneeze reflex. For EDAR, what's interesting is he's got shell shaped incisors in either partial or full East Asian ancestry. So he's got East Asian EDAR. And in this variation of EDAR, he's also got CC, which means some East Asian facial traits, non-European ethnic background. Once again, uh, it looks like this guy has got East Asian EDAR. Probably, maybe, maybe he was East Asian in appearance too. Um, not a carrier of cutaneous albinism type 1B, not, not albino. For familiar Mediterranean fever, no risk variants for that. Well, he's not a Mediterranean, nothing surprising here. For MTHFR panel. Uh, it looks like very good genotype, normal hymocysteine levels, good genotype. Uh, once again, good genotype here as well, and this genotype right here, which leads to average or slightly higher than average blood pressure. For breast cancer, we see that this is these are the risk variants for breast cancer he has. There's a couple more, because he was scoring more than 5, but uh, it looks like there's some risk variants for breast cancer here. For testicular cancer... Yeah, okay, this is this is not really all that good. This is not all that good. I don't know if there was a testicular cancer back in... Um, when this individual lived in Peru. Because I feel like a, a big part of these cancers is environmental and like what you eat and what you... Um, where you sleep, stuff like that. For leukemia, this individual has... Okay, four times increased risk of leukemia. And, yeah, so when it comes to cancers in general, and leukemia, keep in mind, it's a cancer of the blood. Um, when it comes to cancers in general, this individual doesn't isn't doing so good when it comes to these scores. All right, we're going to go ahead and look at his ethnic calculator results with my ethnic calculator. With my ethnic calculator, he's closest to this Mongol individual, BGR02. Uh, what's kind of surprising to me is he's not all that close to Anzic Amerindian, to the Amerindian I have here, uh, the Anzic man. So he's closest to Mongol, followed by that is Polynesian, followed by that is Turkic, somebody from, you know, some Turkic guy. Um, I think this is a Turkic from Mongolia, actually. We're going to go ahead and look at um, freeway mode. So with the freeway population uh, admixture, this individual seems to be getting modeled as a mixture of Mongol, BGR002, Anglo-Saxon individual, uh, low-quality Anglo-Saxon individual, and WH4, Australian native. What if we reduce that to 4? Now he's getting modeled as a mixture of Korean plus Burtas from the Volga, which is, um, you know, an ethnicity that used to exist in the Volga in the, mid in the medieval period. Uh, and they, they kind of went extinct or got absorbed into, like, M Mokshas or Erzia. Uh, then there is Afontova Gara 3, which is uh, ancient North Eurasian. And there is Volga, Chorni Klabuki, Turkic individual, uh, also an ethnicity that no longer exists. It just kind of got absorbed into the Mokshas and uh, the Mishar Tatars who live there. Alright, what about five populations? With the five populations, it's getting modeled as a mixture of Korean plus, once again, ancient North Eurasian, and some, there is even Syrian Arab here. Kind of crazy. Alright, interesting. Now we're going to go ahead and look at his results with um, GZ. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K13, and I know you guys want to see his results with... Um, uh, with um, Ancient Eurasia K6, right? Because they have an Ancient North Eurasian category there. So I'm going to show you that as well. So you see this is what... Wait. So you see this is what he is scoring with uh, Gedrosia's Ancient Eurasia K6. As you can see, the biggest component by far here is East Asian. But he is scoring a little bit of Ancestral North Eurasian. And he is scoring a little bit of Ancestral South Eurasian and West European Hunter Gatherer. Kind of crazy. And... Even a little bit of Natufian. Very interesting. We're going to go ahead and look at the Oracle. Uh, with the Oracle, he's closest to Pima, followed by Clovis, followed by Altaians, Kyrgyz, all the usual suspects. 
And it looks like he's getting modeled as a mixture of Clovis plus Kalmyk, or Clovis plus Mongol, or Tibetan plus Eastern Hunter Gatherer, kind of all over the place here, but it looks like relative to Pima, which are, from my memory, Native Americans who live in Peru, uh, he's a little bit shifted towards Anatolian Neolithic and Europe in Neolithic, so a little bit shifted towards European farmers. Alright, well that's pretty much all there is to it, you can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description of the video. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content, and goodbye.